Hello, and welcome to Why I Love Warhammer, the series where I go into an unscripted ramble about why I love something in this hobby. And on today's episode, it's the Adeptus Custodes, the golden boys, the custodians of the Emperor himself. These guys are really cool. I love the fact that they are so elite. Like, you know, Imperial Guard, the Astra Militarum, they're a horde army for the most part. Space Marines are an elite army. The Grey Knights are yet one step more elite. And then the Custodians, they're one step more elite again. These guys are the absolute greatest warriors in the entirety of the Imperium. There's only 10,000 in existence, and they all guard the Emperor's Palace on Holy Terror itself. There's something about that that I really like as well, that, you know, they, 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 the, the Imperium of Man is trying to conquer the galaxy, and yet their best warriors are on guard duty, um, and that kind of waste of resources, I think, is very telling for the Imperium. I really like that storytelling-wise. I also like how they you know, they have been around since the heresy, so that they are, you know, they're, they're a multi-game system faction, and also they're pretty. They yeah, they're all wearing you know really shiny gold, which is really hard to paint if you're me, but looks really beautiful when it's done. They've got the rich history, and I like the and also when they did the. Kind of the story section of the custodian where the gene stealer cults invaded terror infiltrated terror the idea of the you know the custodians versus the gene stealer cults is such a such such a such a stark contrast in how in kind of the power scaling but also the numbers of each of the factors i thought that made for a really interesting story both mechanically uh, in game mechanically as well as kind of from a law perspective from that kind of politics perspective of it i think that's really fascinating um also i think i, I got interested in them as, as an army when i was looking at getting my my second army after necrons um, in eighth edition i was trying to figure out how could i get an army without putting down too many models but also not knights at that point and I thought, uh, and the answers were Grey Knights or Custodes. And Custodes were a bit more detailed than my painting skill at the time would allow for. Um, so, but I've been fascinated by them ever since. Uh, so, with that bit done, let's go into some of the models and why I think they're really awesome. So, here we have one Trajan Valorus. And, you know, the, the Captain General, this guy I just think is fascinating. He's got that kind of, the, the, the facial hair just exuding power, that stern expression. The feathers, the constant eagle, aquila uh, markings, kind of really there with the Imperium. And also, look at that axe. It's an axe and it's also a gun. It's bigger than he is. And he's not small, he's a you know, he's a big guy, and the axe is even bigger. So just wielding that thing has such power behind it that you can't help but just really get blown away by it. And again, the way it gets painted up with the, the kind of that lightning crackling effect of those force weapons, I think just adds so much to the model. Yeah, just genuinely really fascinating to me. Um, and again, lots of detail. And the red cloaks just make it look so regal in the best way. This guy being kind of sec you know, the, the head of the custodies works beautifully for me. Okay, your classic custodian wardens. Again, just oh, there's something so brilliant about them. The fact that they do they still have the power on, but they do look discernibly different from your regular space marines. The weaponry they wield is special as well. It's kind of gun sword combo. Also, and I, I say this every time it comes up, they have shields. If you're going to have upgraded versions of medieval weaponry, your swords, your shields, your spears, your axes, your clubs, shields make sense. If you've got sci-fi swords, have sci-fi shields. And 
I think it works brilliantly. Also, they've all got the cool little daggers, the Misa Cordias, I think they're called. Um, just adds a lot of character to them. Also, because this is such a hyper elite army, you do feel like you could give every model in your army a name. It doesn't really work so well if you play Orcs or Macrons or Astra Militarum where it's so hoardy, but with the Custodes, you feel like you really could have something really hyper elite and name every single one, kind of get that bond with them. Each one can be given a bit of personality. And yeah, the Wardens is so good for that, the you know, classic Custodian Guard. I, yeah, it works really well. The Virtus Praetors, these these jet bikes, I think, look fascinating as well. The eagles on the front really kind of add that sense of character to them. And it really, it almost makes them look faster. And then with the sculpted cloaks blowing back and the hair, this hair, the hair, the hair glowing, going back, I think it looks fascinating as well. Really adds a sense of speed to the model. Also, these lances, it's like they're jousting. Like pro medieval jousting, I think, works so brilliantly for them. And then also, I always appreciate it when they use an actual flying base stand. They're not trying to disguise it. These things are flying in the air. And that's really useful and important for them. So yeah, these guys, brilliant. Really happy they're part of the range. Um, these two guys I like as well. Um, I forget their name, something Valeran. Um... But what I find fascinating with these guys is they do bridge the gap between the Custodes and the Sisters of Silence. Sisters of Silence, independently awesome. I'll get into them when I, you know, when I load them up. But I enjoy these two being a pair to kind of bridge that gap. Okay, uh, the Blade Master Champion. Really like this guy. I think it's just really cool to have someone who is just charging in with a sword. It makes them really characterful, make, makes them meaningfully different from the other characters, and he just looks so ready to go. He's just there, ready to just swing in. Such a really brilliant sculpt, and I'd love to have one leading my custodians. Uh, okay, um, the Alaris custodians, Again, what can I say about these guys that I didn't say for the um, for the Custodian Guard? They're really cool looking. They use spears and axes. Big chunky guys. Super elite. Resplendent royal colouring. Reds and golds. I know you can paint them white and silver and it's still more accurate. But I just think these guys are amazing looking. And... Because I love the stories with them, I love the fa I love the patrols they do. I just they're just a, such a fascinating model, so fun to paint, so detailed, but not in a way that's distracting, in a way that adds to the model. Same again, Misa Cordia out on display, the spear guns, beautiful, beautiful models, such a wonderful army. Okay, I always prefer to paint mine up with helmets where possible. But that's just because skin tones don't work so well for me. I'm not so good at painting skin and hair. But a nice helmet, I can keep that consistent. More of the bikes. Like I say, what can I say about these I didn't say last time. Beautiful models. The, the joust, you know, these joustings. Uh, yeah, the, the jousting lances. That's the word I'm looking for. These classic custodian wardens again. They're just, yeah, really nice looking models. Backbone of the army. Same again. Again, uh, Alaris, uh, Alaris Terminators. Again, fascinating models. Really big and chunky. I also like the fact that here it's very obvious that the hair is part of the armour. And they're, they're bald underneath. But it's just part of the uniform to have these ponytails. Uh, that makes a lot more sense to me than having a fully helmeted model with the hair poking out at the top. Um, just feels more structurally sound, and these guys really demonstrate that. Again, love the helmets for these guys. Also, the guns on the hands I think is a really cool weapon choice to have. More of the same, more of the 
brilliant. Okay, Sisters of Silence. Um, prosecutors, your uh, your witch hunters, and your prosecutors, witch hunters. The, the, there are three kind of variants of the Sisters of Silence. And I think they're phenomenal. I love Sisters of Silence from a law perspective because the idea of the psychic blank is something I find really fascinating. Because in theory, you think, oh, great to be a psychic blank because it means I couldn't be affected by all the psychic shenanigans going on. But then you start learning more and you start realising, well, hang on, being a psychic blank is functionally having no soul. People are scared of you because there's something missing. And the idea of having this whole faction of nothing but psychic blanks is brilliantly terrifying to have. The idea that you got these people walking around who, like, they have parents. They have people they work with. They're not robots, but they're soulless. And there's something about that that's terrifying. And I think that really works for this grimdark universe, where it's here are this group who fight for the Emperor, but they are genuinely soulless. Like... The Salamanders will help out civilians. The Space Marines, they might kill a civilian, but they'll feel bad about it. The Sisters of Silence, it's pure, cold efficiency. And that kind of utilitarian nature of that, I think, is fascinating storytelling and makes for a deeply scary army, a deeply scary set of set of models to the point where I feel like I'd be more terrified of a Sister of Silence than I would be of a Chaos Defiler. A Chaos Defiler will kill you, but it does so in a way that isn't going to... That it, it's just doing its thing. These guys would look you in the eye and incinerate you and it's for their it's for the best in their view. Something about that I might have explained it badly, but these guys, yeah, the the, the women of the Sisters of Silence, I think scare me more than any other faction, any other set of models. And if in the grim darkness of the forty first millennium, where there is only war, something that scares me to my core is something that's doing its job brilliantly. I would love to play as the, Sister of Sil as the Sisters of Silence. I'd love to play against the Sisters of Silence. I'd never want to meet a Sister of Silence. Not a real one. If you're cosplaying one, that's cool. Okay, final model, the Land Raider. I love a good square blocky vehicle. They feel stackable. And the Custodes ones I like for just being the same but more. Uh, you yeah, know, they're gold and red, but they've still got the tank treads. Got a lot of respect for the old, you know, for the Land Raiders. I just think they're really cool. And the fact that the Custodes get them is equally brilliant. Um, so that's kind of the end of the Custodes. Sorry it was a bit more rambly than these normally are. There's a lot of very similar models that I love for very similar reasons, so I ended up skipping through quite a bit of this. But, yeah. I love the Adeptus Custodian, and I love the Sisters of Silence. Brilliant, terrifying, love the lore. And that, yes, yeah, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to drop this video a like and subscribe, that'd be amazing. If you want to drop a comment. Um, comment question of the day. Which army or set of models in concept scares you the most? Um, like, like for me with, with the Sisters of Silence. Uh, with that, I hope you have a really good day. If you want to share this with any friends, that'd be great too. And until next time, have a great day.